end. So as promised, I did say that I'd go over some analysis. So I just thought, what better time? We're beginning of the, the next trading week. And so I just wanted to go through with you and just show examples of how you can plot our areas on the chart, just looking at significant reversal points. So you can trade in both directions of the market. Now, this is something that I've learned probably over the last two years to identify. So don't just jump in because you could get absolutely slaughtered in the markets if you're going against a trend. But I just wanted to show you a different way of looking at the markets. And hopefully I'll see if this will help you moving forward. So you can see here, these are my plottings for last week. Um, first of all, I'd say keep your chart very clean, as clean as possible. You don't want loads of fibs all over this, loads of trend lines everywhere. It's just going to look messy and it will cloud your judgment. So moving into last week, now I could see at the moment we're obviously in the downtrend, we're making lower highs and lower lows. But then we came into this area, very bearish, and you can see that we've been unable to break through here, all right? The volume's died down, and then we've had an impulsive move to the upside. Now, for me, using my strategy, I can see that this is a significant area of interest. So what I will do is, I've, you can see here, I've drawn the arrow across, just to see when price comes back into this area, if there's any opportunity to take a trade, to take a long, to see if we can get that impulsive move. Now, you can see, actually, in this instance, price has come back in, and using my strategy, if I was going to take a long, for example, could go back up to here, I took stops just underneath, all right? And what we're looking at there, we're looking at a 1 to 32, all right? That is one trade that you can take within a few hours, and that can you be that can be you done for the month, all right? Some people look for 2, 3, 4% for a month. That gets you a 1 to 32. Now, we can see, so prices come up, we've come back into this area. Moving back to here, some may say, well, why have you, you know, it's not worked here, it's come back through this area. Now, I wouldn't have taken a trade here, just because you can see the volume is so high. This just doesn't make sense to me. Over here, price has slowed down, so that's fine. But here, price has crashed through. Now, the reason we've crashed through is because there will be stops under here. So the market's coming down to take the stops to then move price higher. Um, coming further up here, we've got another point of interest. Now we've been making higher highs, higher lows, higher high, higher low, higher high. Then we've got this channel, which we've broken out of, and then we've got the impulsive move. So for me, I'd be saying, right, let's look at structure. Where was the last higher high? You can highlight the area here. And then as price comes back into it, I'll be saying, right, here's an opportunity here to take along. Now, for example, let's put the risk reward tool back on. We can have it here. We can tuck stops just underneath and then ride that higher. Now that would only give us a one to five, all right? One to five, nearly one to six. That's quite a risky move and you can see Price has smashed back through. But it's also important that if we were in this trade, because you don't know, this could keep going higher and higher and higher for another 100 pips. So you have to react to the market. I would have moved the trade to break even anyway after this impulsive move. Um, and probably would have come back out and taken me out break even. But that's okay. That's part of the strategy. It doesn't matter. It's a numbers game. We need to look at certain trades, and you're not going to be getting these 1 to 50, 1 to 20 every single trades, every single trade. So... We can see what's happened. Price has then come up. We've created this high here, which is in New York, New York Open. Um, and so again, this is another significant area for me because prices, we've struggled to go higher and then we can see all the bearish volume at the bottom. So we've come back, we've created this right shoulder and then we've got the significant move downwards. So again, for me, I would be saying, right, let's have a look and see if it's possible for me to enter a trade when we're hitting this right hand shoulder. That is, if price is telling me that this is, obviously, we've got weakness here. So you'd wait, you wait, obviously, you'd have your 1 to, I think it was 1 to 32, up to here. I wouldn't go past that, again, because we've got the right shoulder. We hit this right shoulder, and then we can see straight away the bearish momentum. Now, if you're an aggressive trader, obviously, you'd, you could go down to the lower time frames, look for the wiki price action, maybe on a 1 minute, 2 minute, 5 minute. But again, that's for you to master as you get on in your journey. So let's say we were to enter a trade here. We'd have the stop just above. And we could ride this. It goes all the way down to here. And that's a 1 to 62. 1 to 61, 1 to 62 trade that could have been taken. Um, now, again, I would have moved to stops to break even. You'd have panicked a bit when it came back up here. But you've just got to trust your analysis. Okay. We can see and we know the price has struggled to go higher. Price, we've got this impulsive move up and then we've got this move back down. So we know actually that 
we're more than likely going to be moving into a downtrend, which we have done here. We've got the lower high. All right, then we're going out to lower low, lower high, lower low. So another area of interest for me is this here. Now, again, we can see it. So we've had the impulsive move up. On the lower time frame, we've broken structure. So if we were to, if we were to go into the, I don't know, two, three minute or five minute, you'll see that these are significant points here, here, and here that have been broken. So this is the first point of support after the break of structure. So this is why I would highlight this. Um, and you can see what's happened is that once we follow price, it's come back up, it's hit resistance, which again was previous support, now resistance, which is just standard structure. And then where does price come back into? Obviously, we have the support here, which is from the previous uh, uh, support from the left. And then we we obviously come all the way down and we drive straight back up. And where do we come back up to? We come back up to the previous support after the break of structure. So again, that is a significant uh, consideration for me for a trade. I could go in there. Obviously, you can see that we've wicked straight in. Um, we've, I've come down to this support point down here because, again, this is where we found significant support. And then we just put the stop just above. And again, that is a 1 to 10. Now, one thing, again, we need to look at is obviously delving straight into this. This is a really bearish candle for me. We've come back in and we've struggled to even stay within this zone, stay within the zone that was previous support. Previous support from this area here. But if you look at the volume, the volume is very bullish. Now, what that means is that price has been driven into this area on purpose to fake out traders to go long. So it's been driven into this area and then we're closing lower. You've got a lot of people going, right, you now on a high time frame, this may be a bullish and gold thing. Let's go in long. And what happens? Bang, it comes down, takes them out, takes all the stops. So that's a consideration for me to show that price is still looking to the downside. Now, we could have had that one to 10 down there, which obviously we would have taken profit here because we've driven into the previous support. Then at this area, I would have looked and said, right, I can see that we are rejecting prices slowing down here. And then also you can see this bullish momentum growing at the bottom to move price higher. So let's look at along. Taps us perfectly. We took our stops just underneath. Ride this back up to the previous support now resistance, that's nearly a 1 to 12. And then coming back into that resistance area, we have a three pin pattern. Okay, so we've got one drive, two drive. You've seen that break of structure on the lower time frame. It's come back up and then it's hit back into that previous support now resistance. And then look at it melt. So this one trade that you could have entered, look how many opportunities you've had. So you've had one opportunity, two opportunities, three opportunities, fourth opportunity to get in, and that'll provide you a 1 to 15. And it's just about now, obviously price has died, and it's just consolidating around. I'd expect price to come back up towards this area and to test once more. Now, you've got to be wary that there will be a lot of stops above here. Price could come up, take the stops, and drop further. So I just wanted to show you how simple it can be if you've got a clean chart to go through and just plot out areas and you can work both sides of the market it's just important just to know right this is previous support why did it leave from this previous area okay same here previous support why did it fly up from this previous area you're always going to come back and test it the market has to come back and test it okay again we've got up here market died there it couldn't go higher it comes back up into this area and then drops and these are all opportunities for potential trades now again i'm just showing you there i don't know that may be about one to a hundred for all those trades something like that within a week all right but again you've got to be extremely careful and know your markets what i would advise you to do is go through and back test or even forward test and draw different levels on the charts you need to understand which are the most significant levels because there are so many, you could be drawing a level on here, level on here, level on here, and just go into so many trades that are unnecessary. You need to learn to pick the best trades for you and then just see how they play out. And um, always important as well, never over leverage. You're only ever wanting to be risking a max of 1%, but you can see there that 1% would have made us 100% with all those trades taken last week. So I hope this has been helpful. I'll try and come back on and do 
more and more um, over this week, see what, how the markets play out. But again, if you've got any questions, let me know. And um, cool, I'll speak to you soon. Bye.